So we've got Chaz working on secret projects is one option. We've got apparently Serathiel sneaking out to see his boyfriend is another option. We've got V doing mysterious V things. <laughs> Love that. And then I was planning on having this kind of montage over a couple of weeks. So we're not planning on doing all this like right mm-hmm. now today. There's other stuff with a capital S that we need to get to. Uh, so who do we want to follow next? Do we want to do Chaz's secret stuff? Do we want to... I want to hear about uh, Sarathiel's hot sex. That's what I want to hear about. I, oh my god, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I'm intrigued on how you're going to figure this one out. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Sarathiel feels like Balantiel is just, like, smart and sneaky and, like, Slytherin enough. Where if, like, Sarathiel just casually takes a walk around Silvery Moon... That and sits down at a table at a cafe somewhere. Yeah, no, he's definitely sneaky enough. <laughs> he'll, he'll eventually find him. Valid. All right. So my question is, do you have like specific things you want to actually RP out? Or are we just going to let you guys do whatever you want to do? That scene. He does want to ask him about Shemesh, or S, rather. <laughs> he doesn't know. We, out of character, I know exactly who S is. <laughs> yes, we do. Oh, God. But Serathiel doesn't know who she is. All right. So let's see. I'm going to say it's probably later in the day. It's a little easier for you to get in and out now. You've been able to go on some visits out to like Viernan's place. So maybe they assume that you're with Chaz or something. I don't know. We'll just say somehow you managed to get out of the compound Serathiel is quite sneaky, I feel like. He can do it on his own. Yeah, you, you've got you've got decent sneak when you're not in your armor, that is. Yeah, he has very bad sneak when he's in his armor. But I feel like you sneaking out in your armor would be even more conspicuous, so. Yeah. Literally, he's just like, Balantiel's got, he, like, he's totally, he's got this down. So he just takes a casual walk out of Aptap, finds a nice cute little cafe and just sits down outside and just kind of waits for Balenciel to show up because he kind of he has an idea that he probably just will. You're probably not wrong. (laughs) I'm not going to make you wait too long. Like I said that he fucked off. But again, you don't know where he's fucking off to. Like it could be really quick to get back from he might have just fucked off around the corner. Yeah. And he clearly shows no compunctions about just wandering around Silvery Moon. As evidenced by his having tea with V and the fiance. <laughs> was very comfortable. Belle is many things. Awkward is usually not one of them. So I feel definitely orders him. I assume Belle drinks like double triple espresso half calf mocha latte or some shit like that. Like the gayest, fruitiest drink because it fits. It vibes with him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've already pegged him as a cider drinker instead of ale. So like, yeah, you're not wrong. Two thirds sugar, one third espresso, just drizzled in chocolate somehow. Yes, chocolate. Yes, caramel. Yes, all of that. Yes, please. I was like, just look at his character art. That like that pose. I'm like, come on now. <laughs> that says I drink extremely sugary coffee drinks. Yeah, <laughs> right. I will take some coffee with my sugar. S'il vous plaît. <laughs> <laughs> and he's ordered a black tea for himself because Seraphiel is very basic. Not basic bitch, but just literally just basic. (laughs) Obvious and simple. It doesn't take him too long to appear. Probably wait for like maybe half an hour or so. Seems like he's more giving you deniability, I guess. Or a chance to back out. Or making sure that nobody else is with you. (laughs) Who can say? Murdering some aptap spy in the corner. (laughs) I know, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It takes him a little to appear, but he does. And once he's... Sure that V is not with you. First of all, he's a little surprised, but he's not going to argue. <laughs> he just slips into the seat across from you. Serathiel lights up immediately and says, I got you a drink. I uh, I went and took the liberty of guessing. Let me know how close I got. And he slides like it's a, a, an atrocious pile of like whipped cream and chocolate and caramel. He's delighted by that. He just <laughs> gives you a little smirk like, yeah, no, you've, you've got me pegged on that one. I had a feeling. <laughs> I wonder if that's a twin soul thing. Eh, uh, or just knowing each other from before. Do I know you from before? Which, I mean, I guess is technically a twin soul thing, too. I haven't had that many dreams. What did you call them? The special before dreams? Remembrances? Yeah, I only had the one. Maybe two. 
I think. They weren't very distinct. He shakes his head. I appreciate your help earlier at the battle. That was good spell work. Thank you. Um, uh, it was interesting to be on one side of it, for sure. And I was happy to help. It's always good to indulge in your interests, as well as doing good. Double whammy. Hey, uh, can I ask you a quick question? And he uh, reaches into his, uh, he's wearing like, instead of like his usual armor, just like sort of like a simple vest over his shirt. He pulls out a little folded piece of paper. Do you, um, do you recognize this handwriting? (laughs) I, yes, I do. I got this a while ago. I haven't been able to figure out who it's from. May I? And he holds his hand out for it. Oh yeah, like without even thinking. Sarathiel, it trusts him implicitly at this point. <laughs> My dear Serathiel, I hear our mutual friend has finally found you again. I do so hope my little spell helped. That charm those artificers devised is a nasty piece of spell work and terribly tricky to unravel without triggering its failsafes. Then again, you're no stranger to tricky magic either. I do so hate to put these things in writing, but needs must, and you are an old friend. So if you need help with a sticky situation, use the enclosed scroll, and I'll see what I can do. Or just ask Bell Bell, and he knows how to find me. By the way, Bell Bell? <laughs> uh, yeah, her idea of a joke, not not my idea. I don't know, I kind of like it. His face just kind of like, mm, really? <laughs> Serethiel decides he's only going to use Bell Bell when he specifically wants to annoy him. But you know, there, I'm sure there will be an abundance of opportunities for that. Yeah, no, I, uh, I really, I, I don't like it, but yeah, uh, no, that's, um, that's, uh, Shmeshka. She was helping me to try to get that spell off of you. Does Raphael know the name Shmeshka? I don't know. Roll for it. I guess Arcana, maybe? Or History? Well, that's, there are zero either way. Yeah. <laughs> One day 20. Oh, womp womp. He does not know the name Shmeshka. <laughs> Who's, who's Shemeshka? He just kind of smiles. Well, she calls herself the uh, King of the Crossroads. She's a bit of a deal maker, a little bit of a haggler, but she's been very helpful in the past. You used to be close to her. I mean, you be the, the God Eater I was close to her. Because I've never met her, he says, desperately trying to remind him of that particular fact. Right, right. But that's okay, right? It's okay, right? That I'm not the God Eater, never have been, and never will be. Like, it's fine. Mm hmm. Because we don't need to kill people, he says encouragingly. Pretty sure we just killed people. Well, that was in a battle, you know, needs bust. So, there are situations where killing's okay. Self defense, for example, yes, is a situation in which it is okay. Okay. To prevent catastrophic tragedy, uh, one could argue, certainly. Okay. But we try to limit it to, you know, extreme circumstances, generally. Okay. Like, he's got his real thinky face on, like he's trying to figure this out. Serathiel is very encouraged. Oh, no. (laughs) He's like, okay, yeah, he's hearing me. Great. Awesome. Yeah, no, what he's hearing is... Yeah, in super dire situations, which are whatever we define as uh, important. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Basically, as long as we have exhausted every other opportunity for peaceful resolution, killing is... Anyway, um, would it be wise, do you think, to ask a favor of her? Because I have a... And he kind of hesitates. He's like, generally not. He says, I've been thinking I might want to do a little bit of... Traveling, maybe. You want her help just for that? Like, I, I could help you travel. Could you get me to sigil and pack? I mean, yeah. So, she's a trade prince. There's always some kind of tat for that tit. You, you have to give her something in return. I have an idea. Well, first of all, ask me this. What exactly did you do to my sword? Like, specifically what? That was you, right? <laughs> yeah. What specifically is wrong with it? Nothing's wrong with it. It's better than it was. Just answer the question, Valencia. 
I, well, you needed, you needed something more fitting. It, um, it was just trying to help you become more powerful. How specifically? Might have cursed it with power seeking. Which, which, which is what? Serathiolith is like still ten in. I mean, it, 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 it was just, it wanted you to be more powerful with, if you were trying to hold back, it would strike for you. Ah. Okay. So yes, I, I do have an idea of what I would, uh, what I would trade, if, if needs must. You wouldn't dare. Listen, it's nothing personal, it's just I would like the opportunity to hold back sometimes. <laughs> Remember that thing we were just talking about it a minute ago, about mercy in almost all situations? That requires restraint. Quite a lot of restraint, usually. Uh, so I would like the option to hold back. I- I'm sure the spell work is great, but I do need the option. But you wouldn't let me get you the other sword either. I'm sorry, what other sword? Oh, the- no, the-, the ja- no, I don't- no, not that sword. Definitely not that sword. Please, no. I do not need that- no. Mm -mm. (sighs) I mean, I guess I could look and see if I had something else stashed somewhere. And I've got plenty of other weapons that I could give you that would be better. I've got a glaive. It's- it's fine. (sighs) No flash, no panache. Not gay enough. (laughs) (laughs) So, Sarathiel, like, right at this juncture, he's- actually kind of open to the idea of Bell being the one to take him to and from Sigil. But I think once plot device happens, at that point he is going to be wanting to go it alone, at which point he'll probably will have to talk to Shemeshka. Also, we cannot, we legally are not allowed to run a and d campaign without including Shemeshka. <laughs> if it's set in the Forgotten Realms, we have to, we have to include Shemeshka. That's true. That was in the contract. Mm. So yeah, he's saying, but yes, if, if you could, um, if you can get me to Sigil and back, I, I just want to talk to Pandaren. Is that weird? Yes. I feel like, I just feel this impetus to like at least meet him. Like he's my father. I should at least talk to him once in my life. He is horrible. I'm willing to accept that, but I still, I need to know where I come from. But Antiel, I need to know. He only made you in like the strictest possible sense of the, phrase like he has nothing to do with who you are now and i grant i grant you that but i you have to understand i've never had anything even close to a family before i've never had siblings i've never had parents the handlers that reared me they were changed so frequently because i was an elf and they usually weren't i've never had anything like like family and I just, I have to try. I just, I have to try. I think it will be extremely disappointing. I don't think you will like what you find. But at least I'll know. What more do you need to know? He kept a harem of people as his horde. And that's objectively gross, I admit. But I have to know. Don't you have... Family, do you have anyone that you would call a father or a mother or siblings? Dragons aren't like that. I mean, these sapphire ones aren't. So you don't know who your parents are? It's not that. It's just we're solitary. Once we're once we're adults or even we just we don't stay close to family like that. Sarathiel thinks that's quite sad. And he reaches out across the table and he says, well, hopefully now you'll have someone to hold on to. He's so sincere. He means every fucking word of it. He just very warmly takes Melantiel's hand and just smiles and there's like not a drop of anything but pure concentrated sincerity. Thank you. It's, um, it took some getting used to the first time as well. Having having someone. We're, um, very territorial. Well, uh, I'll think about when when a good time to head over to Sigil is. We're sort of in the middle of things, but I do want it to be soon. Okay. (sighs) 
Chaz, I feel like you don't do your thing immediately. Like you, it will take a day or two to actually start doing some of your stuff. Yep, yep. So I want to check back in with Gwen and his mom and see how they're doing. Or trying to be more chill. I'm trying to be more chill. Uh, largely failing because, you know, that's a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like exposure, you're starting to become a tiny bit more chill. Like, a little. I mean, I, my, my default state is not chill, so <laughs> that's a sort of... Right, but you're not, you're not like, hyperventilating anymore while you're trying to talk. That's true. You're at least still excited, you're still hyper-focused on catching up, but you're not, like, needing an inhaler or anything. <laughs> so I think I'm showing her and trying to talk in extreme detail about magical theory right now. Like, conjuration theory and, like, <laughs> the really cool things about it. Oh, honey, this would be much better for your father, not me. Oh, he doesn't like listening to it either. Well, that doesn't surprise me, actually. <laughs> but like, oh, this is so far over my head, hon. Oh, okay. Well, I'm very happy for you. It's really cool. And you can see it does really cool things in battle. So I just wanted to share. But that's okay. Sarathiel doesn't like it when I do this either. So oh, I've, I've worked with mages before. Like, I, I, I do appreciate magic. I just... It's not really my style, you know? That's true. You have the cool, very cool sword. How do you lift that thing, by the way? I tried to lift a sword, and Sarathiel's been helping me a little bit, but it's, I'm not really very good at it. Reminder, she actually has a glaive, but she does also have a sword. Well, I mean, <laughs> she just kind of reaches over and just pinches your bicep teasingly. I, I have uh, worked up a bit. <laughs> Dad always said that you were super strong. Honestly, he's had a really hard time lifting things around the house now that you're gone. He can never open the jars. Oh, bless him, but he could never open them anyway. I kind of get serious for a minute, and I'm like, we should we should probably talk about Dad, right? Because I don't know. I mean, he's going to be happy to see you, but he doesn't like change a lot. He really doesn't like change. <laughs> well, that hasn't... Uh... That, that's nothing new. So I, I'm thinking maybe I should tell him, but I don't think we should tell him until we get there. Because I think if I try to tell him, like, in advance, that he might freak out. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that springing me on him would be good for his heart. Oh, he's fine. He always says that his heart's a problem, but he's been kicking around forever. <laughs> I mean, I've got these sending stones that, uh, that Chaz gave me. I mean, I could, I could call him. But I just, um, I don't think he'd take that well. He didn't like a lot of things. He hasn't even seen the pink hair. And honestly, I was a little worried that wasn't going to go well. Oh my god, it's dyed pink. He hasn't seen oh it my either. god, you went through a rebellious phase and dyed your hair. Yes. I love that. <laughs> now it's like canonically dyed. I really want to know what is his natural hair color. I figure like mousy brown or something like that. That's such a vibe. I love that. So this is a lot bigger than the hair, and I was a little worried that the, the hair was going to give him a heart attack, if I'm being completely honest with you. <laughs> well, um... That's the perfect time to do it. Spring your dead mother on him and the pink hair at the same time. You won't have time to react to the hair. That's true. He won't even get mad. In fact, actually, I'm going to go get a tattoo. <laughs> I'm going to get two tattoos. No. <laughs> well, first of all, just coming home unannounced would be bad. I think... At the very least, you should tell him that you're coming. Oh, yeah. No, I meant telling him we're coming. I just don't think telling him about you in advance. Well, I mean, it's been a while, but... I just... What if he freaks out? He might go to, like, the elders and, and tell everybody, and I just... I, just be I think it's better in person. We can just explain it in person. I think he's gonna freak out either way. Yeah, but at least the, this way it will be there to control the damage. And to, like, stop him and give him a, a paper bag to breathe in. <laughs> that really helps. That's a trick they taught me here. <laughs> I know it does. I think he's going to be really glad to see you once he gets over it. He really misses you. He doesn't talk about it much, but you can tell. It's, um, I haven't been apart from him nearly as long as, ugh, oh, this is confusing. But he's been without me longer than I have right now. It's only been six months, but I've had leave occasionally and gone home. Uh, Almost 20 years for him. But he is an elf, so, you know. That's like a month. <laughs> like two months. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm going to have to tell him about Aptat, too. 
Oh, God. I don't know. He seems like a security risk out of character. <laughs> I thought we just swear him to secrecy. You know, he's dead. He's, he'll be fine. And we'll just tell him that if he tells anybody that, like, they could, they could take mom away. So that's what. Yeah, I mean, y'all remember your contracts, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Ethel didn't sign anything. He didn't have an option. I did memorize the contract, but I, we're kind of already, we're breaking them in every possible way, so. <laughs> so we, I think we can just tell him, I mean, I'll just tell him the truth, and we'll just tell him that it has to be kept secret, and that's why we, we brought you home, is to keep you away from, from the danger. And then you can tell everybody else that you were missing and your memory was lost or something, I don't know. Okay. We'll work on the story as we head there, I guess. That's fair. I'm not very good at lying, if I'm being completely honest with you. Yeah, I've noticed, honey. It's, it's a good thing, generally. How are you doing with all of this? I mean, it has to be kind of a, a shock, right? I mean, that you were gonna die, and that I'm, I'm your adult son, and you left the baby version of me back in time, and like, are you okay? Are you doing okay? Cut to it, and it's like Valkyrie just doing the binge drinking, you know? <laughs> You don't know how many empty bottles are in her room. It's fine. It's It's been a shock. Um, I always knew I could die in battle. It's That's just part of the job. I don't know. It, I, I haven't been lost, so it's strange to be found. Yeah, I, I can imagine. I mean, if somebody came and told me tomorrow that I was going to die in five minutes and they wanted to take me to the future and miss out that time. I yeah, time is time is fucked up to think about. I really prefer not to. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, that's fair. So, are you okay? I think I will be. I mean, it's definitely better than the alternative. At least in my, I mean, I think it's better. I think it's definitely better. Right? He's like looking at her for approval. I wasn't sure if I did the right thing. But it, it feels like it's the right thing. I can't tell you what's right or wrong in that situation. I've never been through it. Would you have done it? I I would move heaven or earth for you or your father. But I'm not I'm not clever like this. Well, I just had a lot of help from my friends. Honey, you took out two creatures with one hit. I uh I think you can have a little bit of pride in yourself. Okay, that was pretty cool. It was epic, honey. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. Well, if you stick with me, you're definitely going to see it again, because we get into this kind of nonsense all the time. Don't tell Dad I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Dad just thinks that I'm at school. He didn't know I even took an internship. Well, no, I, I told him I was taking a, a summer like study class. Okay, we're gonna. We're also gonna on that trip. We're gonna talk about lying to your parents. Okay, honey. <laughs> well, he just he didn't. He seems like he wouldn't take it well, Mom. I mean, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't even want me to go to school. I had to argue with him for years. He didn't even want me to leave the house. A little lying to your parents is okay. <laughs> I mean, a little bit. A mom is not gonna <laughs> think so. <laughs> This mother just got her child back, still thinks her child is, like, baby. So, no, lying to mom is not good. Lying to dad, not good. <laughs> okay, well, you'd understand. You'll understand, mom. You haven't seen him in a long time. Well, I mean, not for you, but in in time. Anyways, you know what I mean. It's, yeah, yeah. I don't think he's that much different, but, you know, people do change. Yeah. For her, what you're telling her about, like, he didn't want to let you go to school? Like, what? This was an argument? Like, they were talking about schools when she left. Grief changes you as a person, speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. 100%. It does. But, like, she hasn't seen it yet. <laughs> I mean, she's she's not doing great, but, like... That's to be expected. It, it, how would you do? <laughs> Not great. That's why I'm asking. I I'm imagining that me personally, or Gwen, would have a very hard time with this. <laughs> like lots lots more panicking than is currently being exhibited. So, well, okay. So you have to think about the fact she is a military commander. She is used to probably shoving her feelings in a box. Yeah, showing strong, not dealing with them. 
focusing on the task at hand, which right now is integrating into society in the future. Yeah, that's fair. Introducing herself to her husband, who's been dealing with her, been dead for 20 years. Oh, can we also wreck on this that I've like ca- caught her up on history? Because I feel like that would have been something else I did. Did she miss the? Did she oh, miss yeah. the time of troubles? Like just straight up miss it? Because that would be hysterical. Like I don't want to get into it now, but that would be absolutely fucking hysterical. Especially because Gwen does not know what the time of troubles are. <laughs> yep. Oh shit! That was like the year before the setting. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, she totally fucking missed the time of troubles. She definitely doesn't. Okay. Well, I cannot explain that to her because I do not know. So. I actually have to retcon what I said earlier because the Time of Troubles went Mm. on for a while. So there's some fuckery with our timelines. It's a time travel campaign. What do you want from me? It's hard enough keeping a timeline. I I still do like the idea that Gwen's like, even though he literally lived through it, he still does not know what the Time of Troubles were. Yeah. Look, there's other things that are more important that are, you know what, This I feel like we all knew this kid in school. (laughs) Could not be fucking bothered. Yeah. Well, I explained everything about history that I remember, which is not much, so. <laughs> I, I feel like she's also grabbed a couple books from the library or had you check a couple out. Oh, oh, I 100% brought way too many books back. Nice. Uh, yeah, so we've, we're, we're getting her caught up. She is definitely a little shell-shocked, but who knows? Highly functional, maybe. Cracks might be seen in time, or she'll get through it in time. She's freaking out, but she's also a mom. She's not going to show her kid that she's freaking out. I think how I'm going to deal with V and what V is up to is I will do some side scenes. Y'all should be able to guess some of the stuff that he's working on, having lived through the Fracture campaign and knowing about Silvery Moon's fate. Hmm. Spoilers. I don't know what you're talking about. And I certainly didn't have anything to do with it. The the entire reason that I set this campaign in Silvery Moon? Hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Right. Re- revenge is what the answer to that is. It was revenge. <laughs> I don't know that it was revenge so much as it was just being fucking petty. Okay, so side season spewing. All you really need to know is over the next, like, week or two, V just starts to look, like, really tired and increasingly frazzled and stressed in your interactions with him. He says- Everything's fine. Blows off any attempt to actually find out what's going on. That's not going to last forever. No, I Sir Ethel. No. <laughs> but you're distracted by sneaking out. He does have a new boyfriend to sneak out with, but still, like, this is Zirnin. He's going to he's gonna notice and he's going to eventually, like, corner him and, like, tell me what's wrong or I'm going to punch you. Every time you evade the subject, I'm just going to punch you. Like, wow. speak. His AC is 12. Don't. Well, that'll make it easier to punch. He's only got 45 hit points. <laughs> Punching only does 1d4 plus strength. He's fine. He's actually got 62. I'm I'm exaggerating, but you know, whatever. I'm allowed to hyperbolize. So y'all are busy for a few days. V is busy doing other things. And remind me, Serathiel is not at all interested in having the mark removed. Like he said he would live with it for whatever period is yeah he's still convinced himself that it's necessary he's convinced himself that he's just dangerous and to a certain extent it's just better this way oh boy but that said once the, if the mark does break he'll be like actually never mind that was all bad that was horrible toxic self-destructive thinking yeah but for now with 10 in it's not that deep for him he was going to be the god eater he had to be stopped and this is the best way to do it we're going to do Chaz's secret project in this episode. Also, Tanya, I don't know when we're going to get to that. Yes. No, we, we are planning on doing Perfect. the secret project. So what I, was, if, what I was planning to set up is V has two secret projects of his own. One is he's actually working with Belantiel because both of them disagree with Serathiel's thinking and think this mark needs to get the fuck off of you. I was going to say traitor and then I was like, okay, never mind. I mean, Chaz agrees with that, but he's just like, still working with him. Gross. With the enemy. Yeah, I know. I know. But he is an extremely powerful magic user. Like, lame. Yeah, really, really hate this, especially because he holds it over V's head that you've been sneaking out (laughs) to see him. Glad I don't have to deal with that. Yeah. 
Their dynamic is <laughs> anything that Belle can do to stick a needle under V's skin. It's just like, okay, here, poke, 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 poke. Yeah, he does seem like the type. I mean, look at him. V is working on some other projects. So like he's available if you need him. But you know, you don't seem interested in hanging out with him, Zarathiel. If his scraggly unkemptness gets much worse, he will suddenly be very interested in, like, again, punching until you speak. To be fair, to be fair, V is always kind of scraggly unkempt. Uh, I would direct your attention back to the inspo channel. Yeah, but it's it's getting, you've, you'd said it's getting markedly worse. There, there's definitely some circles under his eyes going on. But, like, who are you to judge, Mr. I didn't sleep for how many days? How many weeks? He was going through a personal crisis. Leave him alone. Leave my boy alone. Never. It is my DM prerogative. Chaz, you've just been distracted. Mm -hmm. You're working on your own things. V is working on his own things. And typically, unless you have missions, you don't normally see each other. So it's more like you're just getting back toward pre-campaign type routines for a week or two. Nice. Get to hyper-focus on something. Let's go! <laughs> so, Chaz has capital S secret things to be working on. He has been holed up in his lab, very focused on a certain project. Camera zooms in, there's like sparks flying, and he's like, all right, now, just like that, and if I make sure that it- oh, oh! Okay, okay. Start beeping. Okay, tap in those coordinates. Excellent. Looks like it is working, and he is working on a separate bracer, mm. which is interesting. He's, like, comparing it to the other one that V had him do that's untraceable, but this one that V doesn't even know about. He's comparing them. He's like, yeah, yeah, it looks good. <laughs> now he just needs to uh, take it for a whirl to make sure that it really works, you know? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You recall Blantiel tried to prank him with a bunch of rocks, lol, but accidentally ended up giving him the exact same kind of rock that his Earth Genasi boyfriend or future ex-husband is made out of. You think Belle does anything by accident? Uh, well, he seemed disappointed, so I don't know. He's like, aw, you liked it. How sad. <laughs> That's more he's teasing a drow more than anything else. Sarathi will always assume it was his best intentions. He did it because he knows you need it. Obviously, he wants to do a good thing for you. And there is no, there's nothing deeper than that. You are disgusting and also not here. So <laughs> <laughs> just saying. He's going to try to use artificer nonsense to see if he can figure out if there is an Algodon on his plane or somewhere. So do I need to roll something? What, what you want me to do, DM? This is going to be trickier than just a little bit of tinkering. Well, he just needs to know, like, how close? How much more tinkering do I need to know? So let's use that as a uh, starting point. All right. Just uh, roll me a d20. <laughs> nice. And that one. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. He's like, well, that didn't fucking work. So to be clear, the first roll of the night was a two. The second roll of the night was a one. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, excellent, my future ex-husband is not real, and I love that for me. Awesome. <laughs> no, what happens is you connected something, but like you you kind of jury rid this to connect to the Algodonite, and there's some kind of reaction between the metals uh -huh. that you used and the, and the stone. It does not like it. Mm. It goes, and you're going to have to start from scratch. Well, it's science. I'm okay with this. What's science without a few sparks? Exactly! He's like, this is fine, this is very fun for him. He's like, oh well. Other people probably would have been like, wow, weeks of work down the drain. Like, Chaz is like, eh. <laughs> it's totally fine. I built my own leg, I can do anything. You know, it's fine. I've been holed up in here for a long time. As ironic as it is, I should probably get some fresh air and quote-unquote sunlight. And my hat is wide enough, it's fine. So he puts on his awesomely wide brimmed hat. He suits up to go outside in the sun, as well as a drow con. He's like, well, I guess I should hit up the marketplace. Ugh. And he's going to search for some merchants that look like they have lots of business, we'll say. Well, that's pretty easy to find in the market. There's plenty of options to choose from. I suppose that you find some that look a little bit more mobile than others. Some clearly have more established storefronts. 
Yeah, he's looking for more traveling merchant type. You're looking more for a nomadic. Yeah, there we go. It's not going to be hard to find a couple. Perfect. He will scan the crowd and approach the closest one, I suppose. Okay. This one is mostly humans, and they trade in jewels. He approaches a little slower. He's like brisk walking, and he's like, oh, they're human, and he starts walking a little slower and loudly announces, Hello, good business people, merchants, if you will. Hello. He knows what humans think about Trow, so he is being extra cautious. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, that is more sus than just going up to them friendly-like would have been. So they're kind of like, hello? They're definitely giving you some side-eye from the, the ones in the back. All right, here's the deal. I'm not, I'm not here to cause any trouble. I just want to know about jewels. I would love to know about jewels, specifically ones that would impress men, because I love men. Uh, Bert, help. <laughs> help with this one. I'm no good with that. I am straight. Oh, oh, sorry. No worries. No worries. Of course. No worries at all. Yeah. Uh, so Bert, apparently, because it's the first name that came to mind, <laughs> comes over. Hey, I mean, who knows? The other guy could be Ernie. Shush. <laughs> there we go. Oh, my God. I love it. Bert and Ernie in D&D. Canon. We're doing it. <laughs> Bert comes over and is like, uh, how can I help you, sir? Yes, hello. As I said, I am here. I mean, no harm. I'm actually here to shop. Most people usually are in a market. Right. I mean, he gestures to himself. I'm aware of what I look like, etc., etc. If you were to receive a present from a suitor, what kind of present would you like? That's what I'm after, really. Uh, I mean, I'm personally more into like, you know, kind of gestures to the, the belts and leather mm. stuff over. Mm. Okay, leather daddy, got it, got it. That's valid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, if you're looking for jewels, I mean, these are more masculine cut or, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, uh, these pins over here would look good with like a tie set. Oh, I don't know, what, uh, what is your fella dressed like? Like a gardener. He likes plants. I love that about him. It's very sexy. Okay, definitely not these then. All right. Hmm. Something sturdy then. My man's a druid, okay? He likes to get dirty. Well, here, uh, I'd suggest a couple of these and like he gives you a couple options. Like there's, you know, some less flashy earrings or there's sturdy rings or a bracelet stuff like that. And he suggests if you don't really know, you can always get something else and we can embed a jewel onto it. You know, there's there's options. I seem to recall he likes copper accessories. He's got this lip ring. It's very sexy. He's of the earth, literally. Oh, Janasi. Okay. Yes. Yes. To Janasi. Exactly. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> so he helps you find something that will be good. Is there... Anything else that I can do for you? I just wondered how how business is going for you. It's pretty good. City's really open to all kinds, and mm. we always do well when we come here. He always bring up the more flashy stuff, and he gestures over to what his uh, companion is showing to different client. They go crazy over the baubles and things here. They sure do. Isn't it uh, risky traveling with such precious wear? Yeah, I mean, we've got some pretty good locks and things and, you know, got oh, some alarm spelled stuff and, you know, we usually try to sell the more expensive stuff in the cities before we travel if we can. Try to source local things or make stuff where we where we get. Mm. Um, why, do you ask? These are very expensive wares is why I ask because you don't have any bodyguards at all? You're carrying around literal jewels. Yeah, I didn't say we didn't have bodyguards, but like, okay. Yeah, I mean, like, all of this is just like sus again. You did a really good job of getting him off key. And now if you'd maybe just come out with what you're trying to do, you might have had a better job. But now he's just like, ah, uh, 
why are you asking about all this? <laughs> I'm asking because I have a business proposal. I happen to have a friend who is very good with numbers and also would double as a bodyguard. Because after all, who would dare want to go against a half-orc? I don't know that we're in the market as such, but guess if your friend wanted to send over their credentials, we can take a look, or if they wanted to come over it themselves? Yeah, that sounds fair. I will definitely have her contact you, or some such. Thanks for the recommendation. Cheers, mate. I, uh, I gotta go. Looks like they're getting a little swamped over there, if that's uh, all you need. It is. Go, go. <laughs> Good luck with your man. Oh, thank you. As much as you've been sneaking around and trying to avoid V, because I feel like you think that V would judge you, which, yeah, he probably would. <laughs> v has also kind of been avoiding the team a bit, which it's not unusual because he had been spending more time at home. But he has been working with Volantiel on some stuff in his rare spare time. And he is going to knock on your door one day, Serathiel, when you're just chilling. Serathiel chilling is usually playing the flute. So flute music stops abruptly. There's some shuffling and then the door opens. Ah, oh, Vannon. It has been a while, hasn't it? Hey, uh... You look like shit. Thanks. You're welcome? Um, it's not important, anyway. Is that a new song? Uh, yes. Did you want to come in? Uh, yeah, if I could. You need to step aside and let's in and in. It's the same room as pretty much always. Kind of small, kind of shitty, door doesn't lock. So, um, Balantiel and I have been working on something. Wow. Am I to take this as a sign of progress? Mm, not so much, but... I'm going to endeavor it as a sign of progress. Sure. We, um... We think we have a way to get this mark off of you. I think we really do need to, Serathiel. Serathiel hesitates. So the pain had never really gone away. The pain of it fracturing had never really gone away. That said, he had never let on. He's very stiff upper lip about pain. He says, are we sure that's wise? <sighs> On balance, who knows, but we've got some safeguards up, and I think you know, this, this works by suppressing your magical potential, and that's not healthy either. I mean, I've gone 200 some years with it, without any detrimental, well, any significantly detrimental effects. He just kind of raises an eyebrow at you, like, um... The, there was the whole living as an idiot for two centuries thing, uh, but, you know, past that... Can you trust us that this is what we need to do? I, I just... I'm just concerned. As much as I disagree... With the methods that Aptap has employed, this one specifically doesn't seem like the worst idea. Right? Like, it's not for nothing, but- You keep maintaining that you are not the God Eater. You maintain that you are not evil. But I could be. Isn't that why I was removed from my timeline? This is a safeguard that's supposed to prevent me from killing 20 million people. I don't think that you would ever be capable of that. He would have, but I don't think you're him. I think you are biased. And I think you know what I mean when I say that you're biased. It's taken Serathiel a while to put it together, but he's putting it together. <laughs> that may be. But I also have plenty of other experiences in my life. And I have seen plenty of evil. And you have never given any sign that you would do anything like that. You, <laughs> you lecture a sapphire dragon every time you see him about morality. 
I can't see this broken thing still exerting that much over your personality and who you are. He rubs idly at the chest, just, you know, because it's on his, he's thinking about it and now it hurts more. I, I, it just seems like such a big risk. What if they're right about me? What if this stupid fucking mark is the only thing keeping me from becoming him? Then we will all be there and we will stop you. Do I have your word on that? That you'll strike me down if you think I need to be struck down? Yes. Contain it. That's not what I asked. Aptap has been wrong about a lot, but they were not wrong that the God Eater is a threat that needs to be stopped at all costs. If you want me to go through with this, then I need your assurance that if you think I'm slipping, then you have to do something about it. And I don't mean gently talk me out of it. I mean, strike me down. How can you ask? I swore not to harm Fine. Yes, I will. And he turns away before you can see him cry. No. Oh. Serethiel folds his arms over his chest. He still doesn't feel great about it. But after a bit of protracted silence, he says, Then fine. Cast your magic. Okay. I'm gonna... Get the others, and um, I, uh, we've been working over at the Vault of the Sages in one of their warded rooms. Should be good. Fine. And he hurries out before you can ask him more about what's up with him. <gasps> uh, as if he won't bring it up eventually. I love this. Great. Awesome. So yeah, V gathers the others and explains what we're on about that we're going to try to break the mark. Hey, quick, quick huddle, guys, quick huddle. Um, so uh, we're about to destroy the stupid stamp forever. Hands in, let's go, no questions. <laughs> uh, you're funny. <laughs> First question, are you really sure? You would really doom him to another day with it. He thinks that he deserves it. He's punishing himself for a life that he has never lived. Well, that's stupid and also oddly relatable. Can I count on your help? Of course. Gwen? It just seems really dangerous. Like, what if we lose Serathiel in the process? I am relatively confident we won't. I'd narrow my eyes at that. <laughs> But I also, I also have um, several, uh, let's call them nuclear options, hmm. if, if we need them. Belantiel's found me some supplies that we can use if we need to use restoration or anything like that. I'm hoping we don't have to go down that road. I'm concerned that you are... So you've been working with Belantiel. Yeah, there's so many things I'm concerned about here. Hmm. I just, if it's what Serathiel wants, I'll do it, because he backed me, and so he's got my loyalty, no question. Is it what Serathiel wants? <laughs> it's, um, he, he needs it. This is, imagine if you were cut off from your magic. This is a fundamental part of him that is being suppressed. Yeah, well, I don't have anything left. I don't have any biceps, but he has a lot of biceps. More than, quite frankly, are necessary. It's true. He does have quite a lot of biceps. That's what you're focusing on? Really? No, he's right. Let's hear him out. <laughs> you're not there. <laughs> he sent you ahead to be with Belle at the Vault of the Sages to get set up. Or to make eyes at each other, whichever. Smooch a little bit. A little smooching. If he finds a sock on that door, God help you. Oh no, Serathiel's much too bashful. I'll get into that in DMs. Don't worry about that. I'll just tell Virnan, look, like, I'm going to take your word for it that Serathiel agreed to this, but at any point he wants to back out, he's got my vote, okay? 
I want I want to help him, but I want to make sure we're doing it for him. I concur. I I agree. I'm, I don't suggest this lightly. I, I know how big an ask it is. So y'all head over to the Vault of the Sages. I'm assuming somebody along the way is needling V about how he looks, but he's just kind of like, eh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Been busy trying to figure out complicated magic. You get to the warded room that he had mentioned, and once everyone is inside, it is going to be completely warded. Nothing, theoretically, will be able to get out until specific release has happened. I'm just going to, I think, put my hand on Sarathiel's shoulder and be like, we got you. If at any point you need to stop or you don't want to do this anymore, just just say the word, okay? I've got your back. Sarathiel says, well, let's get this over with. And steps into, I assume, there's like a rune on the floor or something like that. Yeah, there's there's like spell circles. As he steps, Chaz is like, a word, Sarathiel. Okay. All right, yes. He places one hand on either shoulder and looks you straight in the eye. You are not him. I believe that. Serethiel gets a little emotional, but then tries to cover it up with a joke. Man, if I turn into a genocidal monster next Tuesday, you're going to have so much egg on your face. It's going to be hilarious. Gross, I hate that kind of man. And he pushes you like, anyway, go. (laughs) So yeah, Serethiel steps into the spell circle. I'm ready. Let's just let's just do it, I guess. Okay. It takes a long time. It's a ritual that they had to finally come up with. I, they're doing a lot of this on the fly based off of the files that they found. Bell, while a very good and strong spellcaster, was not very good with this type of magic. So it's understandable that A, he needed to go to Shemeshka for help, and B, he still managed to kind of fuck the spell up when he did it originally. But V has history with you as well, from being your handler. He's got some insight into other things that might help, and it's not any more painful than it had been. You get a feeling that the pain was probably a side effect of the botched spell more than the mark itself. And eventually, there is pretty strong flash of magic, and everybody kind of has to look away. It is just blinding. As a character beat, I would love it if the glow of the rune on his chest was gone, but there was still a scar in its shape left behind. Oh, absolutely. And like, we have established this was like a magical tattoo. The wound is still there. It's just, you know. Yeah, just not glowy. Like the second after it breaks, Serethiel sits there for a long time. It's like several people ask him questions, I assume. Like, Bell's like, hey, how you doing? Fear's like, Fear is like, y'all right? And Serethiel just straight up does not answer. And I think he nods mostly and he doesn't really engage. After uh, like a couple moments of like long protracted silence, I think the first thing Serethiel says is, Oh, fuck. Hey everyone, Val here. Thank you for tuning in to the latest episode of Crit Fail Club, Restoration. If you can't wait to hear what happens next check out our Discord server for episodes in pre-release, or to listen in live as we record. You can join us by going to bit.ly slash cfcdiscord. For more information on the show, character biographies, and links to social media, head to our website, critfail.club or critfailclub.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. We don't advertise at all, So if you like what you hear, tell a friend who might also enjoy the show, post on social media about it, or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Full episodes are available on our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash cfcchannel, 
or on other major podcast platforms. Thanks again for tuning in.